Welcome to the lecture series on NCC subjects. This is Captain Binoy Varadil, Associate NCC Officer, St. Joseph's College, Devgiri, Kolkot, Kerala. Honorable Commanding Officer, Respected Associate NCC Officers, Respected Permanent Instructors, My dear Kerebs and Dear Students. We have discussed a number of NCC subjects so far and today is the 33rd lecture and now we are looking at one of the most important topics from the NCC subjects. In the previous lectures we discussed the topics national integration. When we think of uh, the national integration of India, we know that there are different castes, creeds, religions, communities and cultures and languages in this great country. Despite of all these innumerable number of languages, cultures, castes, creeds, beliefs and communities, we remain united and almost all the historians and anthropologists and intellectuals assert the fact that India has a great culture and the first Prime Minister of India Jawaharlal Nehru has said that the culture of India is a culture of synthesis. Yes, my dear officers and cadets, today we look at the culture of India. And when we look at the culture of India, we have to understand the fact that so many races and so many nationalities, or rather so many people of different cultures and religions and customs and conventions came to India from time immemorial. And when we look at the most important races of India, we have to understand the fact that so many races or other various races have been coming to India from time immemorial lot of races came to India and the civilizations of these races differed a great deal from one another. We can see a lot of differences from all the cultures and practices and languages of all these numerous races which came to India. And when they entered India, they had a lot of problems with the earlier inhabitants of the country. So we have to understand the fact that various races and uh, people from different parts of the world came to India and when each and every race or inhabitant came to the country, there was somebody or there was someone who believed in particular uh, culture, religion, caste, creed, convention, tradition, etc. So the new race that came to Indian subcontinent had often to fight and there were so many conflicts. And uh, we cannot say that we have of course uh, particular periods like uh, from a particular point uh, or from a particular period to another particular period one race dominated this Indian subcontinent. We can know well, there was of course a tradition of mingling and mixing in the country. So various races of people, people belonging to different races came here and of course they just lived here. There were conflicts, there were of course amicable relationships, everything we had in our country. And these conflicts affected the respective cultures and through the process of assimilation and synthesis 
what I call right now, that is of course mixing and mingling. Indian culture grew all the more richer. So we have to consolidate the fact that the Indian culture is a culture of synthesis. People from different parts of the world, people belonging to different languages, cultures, races, religions, traditions and conventions and customs came to the India. And when a newcomer is there, of course, there is some kind of prejudice, there is some kind of misunderstanding, there is some kind of lack of understanding, lack of communication, and all this leads to problems and conflicts. But none of these conflicts and problems continue throughout. Every difficulty, all the problems and misunderstandings, they, they were just patched up. And of course, we have a culture of synthesis. And when we discuss the culture, the synthetic culture of India, we have to understand the fact that some six races of people or some six or more types or groups or cultures or races of people came to India, beginning with the Negrito race. In fact, let us initially just look at most of the important races that came to our country and thereafter, of course, we will look at each of the influence or rather arrival or rather just stay of these races in our country, India. So we begin with uh, the Negrito race. The Negrito race is the first race that came to the Indian subcontinent. Thereafter, the proto australiot race came to the Indian subcontinent. The proto australiot race. And number three is the Dravidian race. And number four is the Aryan race, or the Aryans came to India. And after the Aryans, the Muslims came. And thereafter, of course, in the modern period, we have uh, the British people just uh, coming to the Indian subcontinent as, of course, traders initially, and later, of course, as colonizers, right? So, along with the British, we can also see that even before the British, the Portuguese people came. That is, of course, in 1498. So, after that, of course, we can see the Dutch people come, the French people come. All right. But the most, we are today discussing the most important races of India and, of course, how all these races influenced or affected the great culture of India. Let's just look at the very first race that uh, came to India and settled India, that is the Negrito race. It is believed that, or according to the historians, the Negrito race is believed to have come to the Indian subcontinent in BC 3000, somewhere around, okay, BC 3000, the Negrito race came to India. And according to the historian J. H. Hunton, the oldest race reaching India was the Negrito race. They were not very high from the point of view of civilization. They were not very civilized or developed. They did not use any tools or uh, they did not have uh, any uh, sophisticated kinds of uh, kinds of weapons or tools or they did not have such kind of a sophisticated developed lifestyle. And these people did not know. They were just very primitive people who did not know how to, they just lived their life. They did not know how to make use of instruments made of stones and bones. And they were ignorant of using such kind of instruments made of uh, stones and bones, number one. They were also ignorant of, they did not know how to cultivate the land. So you have to understand the fact that these people, the Negrito race, who came to India in the early 3000 BC or even earlier, didn't know 
how to use any tools or weapons or they didn't have any kind of uh, uh, implements made or instruments made of uh, stones and bombs. They did not know how to cultivate the land, so they did not cultivate the land. They also did not know how to make earthen wares, so they did not have any kind of uh, pottery or did not make any earthen wares or vessels. And besides, they also did not know how to build houses. So from all this you can understand that these people are very primitive. They are some, some, some kind of savages who did not know anything. They just ate something that was edible according to them, maybe some roots or some fruits or they could have just come across some animals which were just easy to prey on and they would have just eaten that. This is in fact the very first race that came to the Indian subcontinent, the Negrito race. And when we look at the Negrito race, the presence of the Negrito race today, we can see that uh, some of the Negrito race or rather the followers or the successes or rather some Negrito racial element is seen in the people who believe in the Andaman Islands right now in India. Okay, so they are not found anywhere in India other than the Andaman Islands. So the Negrito race who came to the Indian subcontinent initially are uh, only found in the Andaman Islands right now. So with this, of course, we can just wind up the contribution of uh, the first or rather the understanding or the discussion of uh, the very first race, that is the Negrito race who came to India. Now we look at the second race that came to the Indian subcontinent, that is of course the Proto-Australian race. The Proto-Australian race in fact uh, came to the Indian subcontinent somewhere between or somewhere in some time in the 2500 BC, between 2500 BC and 1500 BC. That is the uh, time of the arrival of uh, the proto australian race. And uh, these people came and uh, they just uh, uh, had some conflict with the Negrito race and they just uh, uh, settled in the central India. They are found in the central India and they are specially uh, found in central India. Okay, they are also found in the southeast Indian uh, peninsula. Okay, and uh, even today we can see the uh, uh, followers or some uh, proto australian race in the central India as well as the southeast India. Okay, and the very uh, people, the proto australian people are also called the Austric people, Austric people in English. In English, the proto australian are known as Austric people. And in Hindi, these people, this particular post proto australian race are known as Agnea, Agnea. And now, when we just uh, look at uh, the tribes of India, we can see that uh, uh, some tribes of India have the proto australian race in their uh, blood. Say, for example, the Santa tribe, the Munda tribe, the Birho tribe, the Asur tribe, Cobra tribe, Kur tribe and Jaum tribe. So seven tribes of India, the Santar, the Munda, the Burho, the Asur, the Cobra, Kur and Jaum tribes are related to the Proto-Australian race. And 
Of course, this particular race, the Proto-Australia race, has contributed to India somehow. When we think of the contribution or some of the aspects of the Proto-Australia race, we have to understand the fact that Indians learned how to cultivate the land with the help of pickaxe from this particular Proto-Australia race. They were uh, in the habit of cultivating and they had some tools like the pickaxe and the, with the pickaxe they cultivated the land and besides the uh, this particular use of pickaxe for cultivation Indians also learned growing rice and bananas, coconuts, brinjals, betel, lemon etc. from these people. So the Proto-Australian race has a positive impact on Indian culture, Indian history because Indians land agriculture or cultivation or cultivating the land with pickaxe from the Proto-Australian. And of course, Indians learned how to cultivate rice, banana, bitter leaves, then of course, lemons, brinjal, coconut, etc. And it is also believed that these people, they, believe, they believed in some, of course, rebirth. These people believed in rebirth and they just believed in, of course, uh, the creation of the world and they believed in just like heathens or the pagans they believed in the uh, natural powers like trees mountains etc so this is what we have to understand about the proto australoid race so we are discussing culture of india and we understand that indian culture is a culture of synthesis and we know that many people People belonging to of course different races and castes and creeds and blood features, right, came to India and so far we saw two of the racial racial groups or yeah who visited India. That is of course uh, the Negrito race and the proto australian race. Now we are moving to the third race that visited or rather that settled in India that is the Dravidian race and we understand that Dravidian race came to India in 1500 BC and these people the people of Dravidian or the Mediterranean race so the Dravidian race they are also known as the Mediterranean race. They came to India after the proto australian race. And they were more civilized than the earlier races. Okay, so the, these people, the third race, the Dravidian race who came to India is the most uh, or rather more civilized than the Negrito race as well as the proto australian race and now let us see some of the aspects of the Dravidian race who are of course more civilized than the earlier races they just uh, 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 believed in many gods and uh, they had uh, different types of uh, uh, religious worship practices and we understand that uh, the Indian uh, religions maybe the very word uh, uh, puja which means worship is of course uh, 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 a, a Dravidian word puja the very word belongs to the Dravidian language and when we think of uh, uh, the Dravidians we can understand that they contributed uh, or rather uh, from the Dravidians Indians accepted or uh, so many things came to India from the Dravidians. Say for example, the acceptance of idols as gods came from the Dravidian culture. So they, they, they worshipped idols and the practice of worshipping the idols came from the Dravidian race. When we thought 
about or discuss the uh, proto asteroid people we said that they began they were pagans or they were to a certain extent worshipping the natural powers like trees and mountains and fire and all but these people the dravidian race worshipped idols number two these people the dravidian race offered flowers and leaves of trees to the gods they worship that is of course the idols they worship offering flowers and leaves number three these people offered vermilion and uh, sandal paste as a part of their worship vermilion and sandal paste so that custom we can see even today so this particular custom of uh, uh, sandal paste and vermilion uh, came from the Dravidian race and another important practice that came from the Dravidian race is burning of incense uh, that is again we can see in many of the religions in of course uh, in Hinduism Hindu religious rituals as well as in Christian religious rituals even in uh, certain occasions in Islam we have uh, the burning of incense or rather burning of uh, fragrant uh, uh, objects right so we have burning of incense and uh, singing and dancing uh, beside the idols of uh, gods is again another uh, practice of the Dravidian people another uh, next uh, practice of the Dravidian people is ringing bells these people also ring the bells as uh, they go on uh, worshipping the gods and another thing is of course right uh, in their religious rituals and practices they offer sweets they not only offer sweets they also accept sweets so the priests as well as the devotees offer and accept sweets as a part of the religious practices and prayers and worship this again is another very important uh, practice of uh, the Dravidian people, the Dravidian race. Now, we, when we think of uh, the contribution or the, the, the very Dravidian race, we have to understand that these people just uh, came forward with a number of new gods and they believed in gods like Shiva, Uma, Kartikeya, Hanuman, Shitla, Ganesh, etc. So these are all, of course, the gods we worship even today, we respect even today. So all these gods, Shiva, Uma, Kartikeya, Hanuman, Shitla, Ganesha, etc. Uh, were worshipped during the time of the Dravidian people. And of course, we have a number of people in India who believe in all these respected gods and besides of course we can understand during the the period of the dravidians the number of gods increased very very tremendously and we have 330 plus gods during the dravidian period or other the dravidians had yeah. To be very precise, the Dravidians believed in 330 million gods. And uh, let us uh, just uh, look at some other uh, contribution or influence of the Dravidian people. These people also practiced, uh, uh, rather they just worshipped or rather they preached the worship of trees. So they just worship trees and they worship trees like Tulsi, Banyan, people and many other trees. So these are some of the important facts and ideas we have to remember when we study about the Dravidian race who came to India in or around 1500 BC. So, uh, BC. so we have uh, so far discussed three of the races who visited or rather who just uh, settled in India or other who have just uh, influenced the culture of India. 
the Negrito race, the Proto Australia race, and the Dravidian race. Now we move on to the fourth race that influenced Indian subcontinent, that is the Aryan race. As you see in the bar, the Aryans came to India between or around 2000 and 1500 BC. And uh, we have to understand the fact that the Aryans made the greatest contribution to the development of Indian culture. So when we think of the Indian culture, we have to understand the fact that the Aryans have a great significance. They contributed most to the Indian culture. So uh, most of the languages of today are the, uh, of course, uh, different languages of Aryans. Rather, it is the language of the Aryans that is used today in many parts of India. We have, of course, numerous languages in India. And the constitution of India is, of course, uh, accepting more than it grows to 30 languages as official languages and we understand that most of these languages came to India through the Aryans. And besides the uh, uh, linguistic contribution or the contribution to the language of India, Aryans Vedas are the main roots of Indian culture. So the Vedas, of course, come to India through the Aryans and according to Dr. Jadunath Sarkar, the influence of Aryan culture on India has been a feeling of sympathy and adjustment, a wonderful evolution of science and philosophy, fixation of adjustments among different castes through the principle of Varna system, and the spread of civilization among demons and wild tribes through Tabovan system. So this is the very summarization of the contribution of Aryan race by the great historian Dr. Jadunath Sarkar. And he says that the Aryans just, uh, they were very, very friendly in a sense that of course they had a feeling of sympathy and adjustment. So before the Aryans we have of course the Dravidians, the proto asteroid and of course the Negrito. So there were so many people believing in different uh, cultures, rituals, languages, conventions, customs, etc. So these people should have just uh, fought with them. But these people, they are just uh, adjusting sympathetically. And as a result of that, we have a wonderful evolution of science and philosophy. And we understand that this particular sympathetic, empathetic, adjusting, cohabiting and uh, amicable or rather friendly habit and style and practice of uh, the Aryans helped India grow into a very good uh, country, rather a country which is just uh, prosperous in developing slowly slowly and we understand that the war the Varna system of course came to India through the Aryans and again these people just influenced the wild tribes and the primitive people in India of course because they just practice what is called the Tabovan system and the you can understand that of all the races that came to India it is, of course, the Aryans who influenced the Indian people, or rather those people, the early inhabitants of India, tremendously. And as, as a result of the influence of the Aryans, Indians became uh, highly uh, uh, sophisticated. They had a good uh, culture, or rather they had, of course, different languages, and they began to slowly, slowly adjust with the different types of people and all this kind of friendly uh, relationship mingling and mixing led to India developing very, very fast. Now we have to look at the fifth race that came to the Indian continent or rather Indian subcontinent 
that is of course the Muslims. The Muslims came to India in the 7th century AD. In his book titled Influence of Islam on Indian Cultures, Dr. Tara Chand has written that the influence of Muslims on the various parts of Indian life has been very great and their influence has been seen specially on Hindu customs. So, we have no doubt about the influence of Islam on Indian culture. And we understand that even the very Hindu traditions and customs have been influenced by the Muslim culture or the Muslim tradition. And uh, on the very minor things of their family, that is of course the, the life of uh, the Hindus, the Hindu family life, uh, the, uh, the music of uh, the Hindus, the dress style of the Hindus, the cooking habit, the marriage traditions, the festivals, the fairs and of course almost all the uh, activities of the Hindus in India were influenced by, affected by the Muslims who came to India in the 7th century AD. And now, when we think of uh, the uh, influence of uh, the Muslim race, we understand that, uh, see, the Marathan people, the, in, 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 the, uh, in the institutions and manners of the Maratha community, the Maratha people, the Rajputs, and even the Sikh courts, uh, we can see some element of the Muslim influence. So, along with Islam, the Muslims brought a number of uh, conventions, customs and rituals and uh, practices and all these practices are just uh, imbibed by, assimilated by the Hindus who were in India. And of course, the, we had in fact a great tradition of uh, synthesis. So the early people who came to India before the arrival of Muslims accepted them and they just lived in a very friendly way. And now we move on to, of course, the sixth race that came to the Indian subcontinent. That is, of course, the British. Now, everybody knows about the arrival of the British. In fact, uh, it, their arrival and the colonization of India is uh, a modern uh, event and now let us just look at the influence of the British race or the British culture on India. After the Muslims, the British deeply influenced all aspects of Indian culture. And when we discuss the influence of British people on India, we have to discuss or we have to understand the influence of the English language. And we understand that so many English words became Indian. A lot of English words became uh, uh, words of Hindi, words of uh, Sanskrit or words of uh, Kannada, words of, uh, of course, uh, most of the other languages of India. And this is the most important thing. And Besides the influence of the English language, of course, the Western culture influenced India. So, British people bring the Western culture, the European culture along with them. And the European uh, literary forms came to the Indian subcontinent. Say, for example, the very uh, prose, the very prose novel, poetry, one-act plays, different types of poetry, and all these different types of literature, prose, poetry, one-act play, novel, all this came to the Indian subcontinent and the Indian languages through the British culture or the British race. And next thing we have to remember is the Western education. 
Now, along with the British came the introduction of the Western education. As a result of the Western education, we have, in fact, a wave of reformation in the entire country. Reformation, a lot of social changes in the country. And when we think of the social changes or reformation in the country, we have to understand the ideas of equality, the idea of freedom, the idea of nationality, all this is just uh, uh, coming to the mind of the Indian through Western education or English language. And as a result of uh, the ideas of equality, freedom and nationality, a number of social evils are uprooted or eliminated or just removed from our country. Some of the social evils are sadi. Everybody knows what sadi is, right? When a, when, when a, a, a lady's husband is dead, the lady as well, uh, she along with, uh, she also just uh, sacrifices her life by jumping onto the pyre of, uh, that is of course, she has to, she also has to accept death. And uh, sadi was of course very common before independence, right? Uh, it was of course common in some parts of the country even after independence. So this particular evil social practice of sadi was eliminated and again uh, the gender difference in India, especially the killing of female children and again child marriage and uh, of course before independence widows were not permitted to marry and now they are permitted after Western education, English education. Widow remarriage is permitted. There was prohibition of, of, of uh, widow remarriage, but uh, with introduction, with, with the Western uh, education, with the English education, widow remarriage is permitted. All this is, of course, uh, benefit of English education, Western uh, education, the British race. And now, when we think of uh, the uh, some other influence and contribution of uh, the English uh, education or the Western or uh, the British race, we have to understand that a number of uh, 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 administrative and governmental practices became Indian as a result of the British rule or the colonization. Okay, so the present form of administration in India is the outcome of the influence of the British ideology. And of course, the present economic organizations like we have the Reserve Bank, nationalized banks, different uh, financial agencies under the government, and of course, the joint stock companies, the managing agencies, big factories, industrial centers, industrial revolution spreading in India and of course agrarian revolution, production through machinery in all the sectors like in even in farming, agriculture, industry, uh, power generation, okay, and transportation, communication, telephone, of course, uh, railway, and of course, uh, all, all this, of course, a, even in the introduction of uh, aeroplanes, all right, all this is the impact of uh, the British culture or other British race and the Western uh, influence, okay? So uh, now, of course, with this, we can just conclude our discussion of uh, the cultures of India. And when we discuss, uh, okay, as we, uh, went forward discussing the cultures of India, we came across six important races that came to India. That is, of course, the Negrito race, the Proto Australian -Austra race, then the Dravidian race, and the Aryans, Muslims, and British. And uh, we just sum up our uh, uh, discussion on uh, the culture of India by saying the fact that, of course, our culture is a culture of synthesis. We were open to all in the sense that we were ready to receive 
we were ready to accept any race, any culture, any language, any tradition, any ritual. And this is the great Indian culture that is a culture of synthesis. Now let us uphold the great synthetic culture of India and let us just remain united and let us be the greatest, the largest democracy of the world with a lot of positive uh, aspects and characteristics and let us just guide the world. Thank you so much for listening. May God bless India.